Maybe you're on the fence about learning Vim. You don't think it's going to be worth your time, or you don't think that you do anything that really warrants the use of Vim. Well, here I have a perfect use case where Vim saved me several hours of work doing the type of thing that even regular computer users might do. What I'm going to show you would have taken me forever with any other text editor. And if you still have doubts after you've watched this video, I challenge you to try and do what I did here faster with literally any other text editor. So here's the breakdown. I have this add-on in Chrome called Proxy Switchy Omega, or just Switchy Omega. And basically, it's a proxy switcher, so it allows allows you to change what proxy you're um, connected to very effectively, much faster than you'd be able to do it without an add-on and configuring things through Chrome settings. And personally, my favorite thing about this tool is that you're not just limited to configuring it with this GUI that they made for us. You can actually configure it through a file, which is where the real power comes in. So you can see right now, I've only got one proxy added to it. Well, actually, this isn't technically a proxy. It's a NordVPN server. But it doesn't make any difference to this add-on. It handles both VPNs and proxies the same exact way. So if you go into Import Export, I can create a backup of this. And it's going to create this file called OmegaOptions.bak. Now, if I vim into this file, it'll show you the same configuration that we just saw here in the GUI output, but in a terminal-based version. So let's just go ahead and leave that for now. And what I'm looking to do is I want to copy all of the German servers uh, from NordVPN over to that configuration file so I can use them in my browser. I currently have configs for all of Nord servers in my Etsy folder to be used with OpenVPN, but of course that would proxy all of my traffic, which I don't want to do. I just want to proxy the traffic from this particular browser. So I can LS to show you all of my VPNs. There's over 5,000 different servers that you get with a Nord account. But like I said, I just want to copy over the German ones. So what I'm going to do is LS, DE star, so that's going to LS everything that begins with DE, which is Germany's country code. I want to do one because I want these to all be in one column. You see, if you do a regular LS, then it makes it fill your screen, but if you do one, then it makes them all go into one column. And I also want to add color equals auto. And what that option does is it's going to prevent these strings from being wrapped by a bunch of symbols in our output file because if you don't do color equals auto you can try this on your system if you want you're going to get some extra characters at the beginning and the end of all of these strings and they're kind of a pain in the ass to remove in vim so just do this during the ls command and then I'm going to output that to downloads, and I'm going to call the file temp.txt. So now, if I come back over here to Vim, create a new tab, and I'll open up temp.txt. So here I've got all of my German Nord VPN servers. There's almost 300 of them, but they're not quite ready to be copied over to this file because as you can see, this has the actual server address here, which is .nordvpn.com, but this has a little bit of extra stuff because like I said, these are technically OVPN uh, file names that we copied over. We just need to get rid of the .tcp.ovpn to make them the real server address. So we'll find and replace tcp.ovpn and we'll do that globally and actually, we want to replace it with nothing and then do that globally. And that still didn't work. Oh yeah, I forgot my S at the front. So .tcp.ovpn, do that globally. So now we have real server names here and I'm going to remove these and copy them over to this file. All right, so now we've got all of our servers copied over, but 
we can't just put them into this syntax here. We need to prepare this syntax to be able to receive the servers because you can't just append them to the end. Uh, proxy switchy doesn't work that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna delete this French server. So I'm going to delete to the, um, what is that, the quote mark, and I'm just going to put a generic string in here. I'm just gonna put VPN. And we'll go to the next one delete to the double quote, put VPN, and the last one, delete to the double quote and put VPN. I could have actually done C in there, that would have been a little bit faster. And finally, what we need to do is just remove this part for now, the add conditions to bottom because that part doesn't need to be copied. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy these uh, strings that I just modified, this long line of code, and we need to create one of those for each VPN server that we're gonna copy over. And we've got 295 of them. So we wanna copy that, go to the end and do 295p. So now we have 295 of those, and then we'll just add this guy back to where he belongs. Okay, so now, what we're gonna do, if you haven't guessed already, is we're going to be using a macro to record our actions, and then we're just going to play them back, uh, what was it, 295 or I guess 294 times. So let's start recording macro A, and I'll walk you through what I'm going to do in this macro. So I'm going to switch to register two because I want to yank this word into it. I'm actually gonna delete it, which, you know, D also yanks it. So I'm going to um, switch to register two, delete that word, and then I'm going to delete that white space that it left behind. And then I'm gonna search for our keyword VPN, and then I'm going to delete to the double quote, and then I'm going to paste what I yanked, and then again, delete to the double quote, paste what I yanked, and a third time, delete to the double quote, paste what I yanked. And feel free to take your time with doing this. You don't have to do it as fast as I did because when we're recording a macro, Vim doesn't count this time that we spend just, you know, reading stuff and philosophizing against us. It only counts the time when you're actually making actions. And then, of course, go back to where you were at the beginning and we will stop recording our macro. So now, like I said a couple minutes ago, we have to replay this 200 and 94 times. Now, if you've been using macros in Vim like I showed you how to do a few weeks ago, if you've ever played one like 100 plus times, you may have noticed that it takes a little while, especially when it needs to go way down in a document and then go way back up to the top. So we're gonna do a little trick to make this macro playback faster. We're going to set lazy redraw if I can type correctly, R-E-D-R-A-W. And what that command in Vim does is it's going to keep the screen from redrawing every single time we play our macro. And that's going to make the macro play much, much faster because obviously Vim doesn't have to take time to redraw the screen for us. And it's also going to use less resources because I've done this in the past. I actually did this once with all of my NordVPN servers. And first of all, it took a long time, even with Vim macros, it took a couple of hours for it to finish running. And it would actually crash a few times because I guess it was using so much RAM usage or I don't know, maybe Vim or something else in Linux, like system D probably killed it or something, thinking it was a bug. Um, so yeah, just set the lazy redraw. And I've been running my mouth so much, I forgot how many times you have to play this, 294. Okay, so we're going to do 294 at A, and now it's playing. It may still take a couple of minutes for it to run. I probably should have done all the explaining of lazy redraw uh, while the macro was playing, but either way, it's only gonna take a couple minutes.
and our macro has just finished. So now you can see we have everything in place where it needs to be. If we go to the bottom of our file, you can see everything is where it needs to be. So let's right quit this. Let's call it um, Omega German servers.bak. And let's import it back into proxy switchy Omega, store from file. Omega German servers. So you see we get the check that our options are imported and here, um, this is one bug right here, this VPN part, but here we can see that everything copied over correctly. And I can't actually show you that they connect. They would connect if I had some real uh, credentials added here. Don't want you guys using my NordVPN um, credentials to do some spooky stuff. But there you go, and like I said at the beginning of the video, try doing this with any other text editor, okay? Maybe you could do it just as fast in Emacs because Emacs is similar enough to Vim, but try doing this in Sublime Text. Try doing this in Notepad++. I bet you you can't because they all are inferior to Vim.